hanging from the ceiling is a cash prize of $10 million. In front of you are two golden balls. One is split, the other, steel. Across the table from you sits the other player. They also have the same two choices, but you don't know which is which. If you both choose the split ball, then each of you get half the prize money of $50,000. But if just one of you picks split and the other picks steel, then the person who steals get the entire jackpot. As for the person who split, they are eliminated. However, if both players pick steel, neither player gets anything at all, and both are eliminated. You've been given a couple of minutes to talk with the other player about your choice. They seem surprisingly cooperative, openly agreeing to split. You respond in the same way. After all, better to walk away with something than nothing, right? It's now time to pick a ball. But just as you reach for your choice, you hesitate, considering the other possibility. The other player throws a glance. So, which do you pick? Are you playing to survive? Or are you playing to win? On the surface, your first thought might be that this game has some resemblance to something like the prisoner's dilemma. Two criminals are held captive and given a choice. You're one of them. You've just been arrested for distributing large amounts of narcotics on a dark web. You believed your upset was tight. FBI, open up! It just wasn't tight enough. In a couple of days, you'll be put in from the court where you'll face judgment for your crimes. But before then, you're told the following. We've arrested your supplier, and he's currently held in custody just like yourself. We have enough evidence already for the judge to give you a one-year sentence, but we're going to offer you both a cooperation agreement. Right now, you have a choice. You can either choose to stay silent by pleading a fifth and refuse to answer any questions from us, or you can testify against the other by offering up evidence of your past mutual dealings and transaction records. If you both stay silent, your sentence stays the same. One year each. If one of you testifies and the other doesn't, Whoever testifies will be given immunity, and the other will be sentenced for 10 years. However, if you both testify, then both of you will receive a five-year sentence. Can I speak to him before I make the decision? No. You have until tomorrow to make up your mind. You sit there, looking over your options. Then, you hit a realization. There was never a choice to begin with. No matter what your supplier picks, the only rational move is to testify. In the best case, your supplier stays silent, and you get full immunity. In the worst case, they testify, and you both get five years. However, if you choose to stay silent, in the best case, you get one year, but in the worst case, 10 years. Comparing each scenario, full immunity sounds a lot better than one year in jail, and a five-year sentence isn't as bad as a 10-year sentence. But of course, your supplier is going to think the exact same thing, and when they come to the same conclusion as you do, you're both guaranteed to serve five years. At that point, there is no chance for either of you to lower your sentence, much less hope for immunity. Now you're starting to realize why the officer refused to let you speak with your supplier. If he did, the situation could have been a lot more different. For one, both you and your supplier have vast reserves of wealth. So a simple way to ensure mutual silence is to agree to each place a bounty on the other person's head if one of you testifies. That way, serving a short prison sentence feels much better than being constantly hunted down. But wait, let's go back a second. In our previous game of Split or Steel, the players were allowed to communicate. So if communication solved the problem in Prisoner's Dilemma, how can we do the same for this? Well, in one of the most famous episodes of Golden Balls, this is how it played out. Abraham, Nick, you have two final Golden Balls in front of you, and they are the most important Golden Balls of the game. You each have a Golden Ball with the word Split written inside. You both have a ball with the word steel written inside. You will know which is split and which is steel because you're going to have a look. If you both pick the split ball, you split the 13,600 and you go home with 6,800 each. If one of you chooses the steel ball and the other chooses the split ball, whoever chooses the steel ball goes home with the whole lot, 13,600. But if you both choose the steel ball, you leave today's game with what you came with, nothing. It's the ultimate test of faith, trust, and let's face it, greed. Take a moment, 
to look at the balls in front of you so you know for definite which is split and which is steel, but obviously keep them concealed from each other. Just have a look. Okay. It's the easiest choice, but the most difficult one. What I want you to do is to spend half a minute talking to each other about what you both should do. Nick, Abraham. Abraham, I want you to um, trust me. 100% I'm going to pick the steel ball. Sorry, you're going to... I'm going to choose the steel ball. You're going to take the I steel. want you to do split, and I promise you that I will split the money with you. Well, after you've took the steel? Yeah. You're going to take steel. Yeah. I'm going to take split. Yeah. So you take the money. And I will split it with you. After the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham, I promise you I'll do that. If, if, if you do steel, we both walk away with nothing. I'm telling you 100% no, I'm going to do it. I appreciate that. Right, I'll give you another alternative. <sighs> Why don't we just both pick? Split. I'm not going to pick split. I'm going to steal, Ibrahim. Honestly, 100% I'm going to steal. It's in your nature to steal. No, I, I'm honest, and I'm going to tell you're, you... You're an honest I am. That's why I'm telling you I'm going to steal. If you do split, then I will I split the money. I can't see myself doing that. OK, well, I'm going to steal, so we're going to leave with nothing. Where's your brains coming from? <laughs> I can't work out... I know that I'm a decent guy, and I will split the money with you. Well, we should just both split then. No, I'm going to do steal. There is no legal no, I know, requirement I know there is. I know there for is. him to give you the of money. Of course. If I gave you my word... Now, let me, let me tell you what my word means. OK. My father once said to me, a man who doesn't keep his word is not a man. He's not worth nothing. Not worth a, not worth a dollar. I agree. So... Abraham, I'm going to steal. So you've got the choice. <laughs> you either steal... <laughs> And we both walk away with nothing, because you know I've told you my intention, and I've told you that I will split the money with you, Abraham. If I gave you my word that I was going to split, I would split. And you're going to take steel, so... The only way you can guarantee to walk away with 6,800... ..is to guarantee that you both put the split ball in. And I do now have to push you for a decision. It's a tough one. We've lost it. We've lost everything. Okay. We've lost, then. We're walking away with no money because you're an idiot. No, that's you're not an true. idiot. You're an idiot. That's what you are. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. That's what you are. We, we, this can go on all night, and these people have got to get up for breakfast. <laughs> Nick, choose split or steal. Abraham, choose split or steal now, please. Choosable. Right. I'll tell you what. I'm going to go with you. Okay. I'm going to go. With I you. promise you, I will split it. You cannot change your balls now. Split or steal? Yes! Congratulations, you have both split and each received £6,800. Why did you put me through that? Why did you do it to me? Now, as genius as Nick's strategy was in this game, what they didn't show was that the actual argument went on and on and on for over 45 minutes. And towards the end, even the audience was turning against him. Nick did not want to negotiate whatsoever. Ironically, that also leads to the biggest flaw in Nick's strategy. I'm going to choose the steel ball. You're going to take the I want you to do split, and I promise you that I will split the money with you. Well, after you've took the steel. Yeah. Right at this point, if Ibrahim has said back to Nick, whoa, whoa, how? Why don't I pick steel? you pick split and then after the game i'll share the money with you why don't we turn it around then guess what happens if they're persistent enough both are going to end up picking steel so how do we fix this well there's a very simple solution this all that ibrahim has to say is the following i'll flip the coin and if it lands on heads i'll pick the left ball if it lands on tails i'll pick the right ball now even though i know which ball is which the coin flip is completely random but what I will say is if you pick split and the coin ends up picking steel for me, then I'll promise to share the money with you after the game. Now let's analyze the probabilities here. So from Nick's perspective, if he was to pick steel, 
there's a 50% chance of him walking away with $10 million or nothing. Now, if he picks Split, there's a 50% chance of him getting $5 million if we end up picking Split as well, or we could end up picking Steel, and then it gets a little bit fuzzy, because on one hand, there is no guarantees from us. So let's just say that Nick doesn't trust us. So there's a chance that we'll keep the money for ourselves, and there's also a chance that we'll split the money with him, okay? Let's say it was half and half. So out of the 50% chance that the coin will land on Steel, there's a 25% chance of us giving Nick the money, and then a 25% chance we'll keep the money ourselves. So now if we add the 25% from this to our previous 50% chance, that gives Nick a 75% chance of walking away with 5 million or nothing. So running it back, he either has a 50% chance of getting 10 million or a 75% chance of getting 5 million. So which one would you pick if you were Nick? Well, I put this as a question up on Reddit, and out of all of the comments, which is like more than 10, everyone chose the 75% option. They'd rather have 5 million as a higher chance than 10 million at a lower chance. And to me, that makes sense. This is known as loss aversion. To avoid risking a loss, people will pass up even very favorable bets. Because if we follow the math, the expected value calculation is 5 million for the 50% option, and 3.75 million for the 75% option. So even though the expected value is higher for choosing steel, most people are still going to go with split, regardless if they trust you or not. It's just much higher chance. So there you have it. That's how you win the game of split or steel.